Hi, Kristen. Hi, hello, Maria. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you virtually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. How are you doing? Are you settling in okay? And Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like it. Yeah, doing well. Good, good. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Kristen. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you, Kristen. Hi, Maria. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. So I wonder if we'll, um, for our future meetings, be in person or? I was wondering that myself. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we're, those decisions are going to be made very shortly here. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I actually don't mind Zoom meetings because um, I can just, you know, sit on my couch and. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, yeah. But no, no travel time, <laughs> no travel time. Um, you know, you don't have to add in that extra, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. Right. Um, but th there is something lacking when you're not meeting in person. Sure, you know? sure. But, um, but I don't, I don't mind them. Yeah, no, I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, halfway decent way of getting to know people. <laughs> Uh, right, exactly. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's different, right. <laughs> but I don't know what we would have done without this. I know, yeah. Hi, Mayor. Hello, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good, thank you. Nice to meet Kristen. Yes, yeah, Kristen, uh, absolutely hit the ground running when we started so well, i bet she did <laughs> she went from a zero to a hundred fast <laughs> i bet hi ryan hi. <laughs> Oh, here. Sideways. Are you on the space station, Ryan, or something? Can I hear that? <laughs> All right, well, it's five o'clock. Should we call the meeting to order? Sure, you've got a quorum. Okay. So um, just remind me again, do I actually take roll call or do I just, as the person taking the minutes, just list the members present? Um, no, you actually would, would indicate who is here by name, absent or excused. Okay. And the reason for that is if, if somebody should miss three meetings in a row, the ordinance says they are automatically uh, removed from the board and we would be seeking a replacement. So we should probably have that in our minutes, correct? Yeah, you, pro you probably should identify uh, who exactly was there. Okay. And I don't believe we did that last time, so. Yeah, so I have everybody that, sorry. Um, I have everybody, it says absent and um, excuse, or at least I send it that way. That's, that's perfect. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. 
and just um I definitely think we should check about because I don't know if everybody knows that um procedure for people um because I know that there's been some absentee people right? yes okay and um can it just be explained to me what is the difference between absent and excused how does that get determined <clears throat> So um, it, the reality of it is if somebody is absent but excused three times in a row, that technically still disqualifies them. However, um, you as the chairwoman make that decision. So you, let's say as an example, somebody is sick. Right. Perfectly understandable situation. They, they've got, uh, they're battling cancer or whatever the case may be. You can give them an exception and that makes sense. For the person that just, you know, continually is a no-show, um, what per the ordinance, what you would do is you would um, just submit to me as an email identifying the individual that said, okay, this person hasn't shown up for three successive meetings, uh, at which point I would send them a letter saying, gee, we're sorry, we noticed you, can't, you haven't been able to make the meetings, maybe it's at a time that's not convenient for you. Um, thank you for offering your service and, um, you know, you're excused. Right. So that's so, all it takes? We want people to be here and take part. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Well, so for roll call, um, welcome Kristen Chapman. Nice to meet you. I'm Lisa. Um, and Catherine, I can never pronounce your last name correctly. Uh, Fleischner. Fleissner. That's what I miss about meeting people in person is being able to do this. Um, and Maria Knott, Mayor Allen, Michaela Sleater, Ryan Prue, Kate Sikorsky, and we have a call in. This is Joe Consolini. Hi, Joe. Hi, finally catching up with you guys. So, um, I believe absent is only Charlene. Unless, is there a call in that I didn't see? No, she's not on yet. Okay. So next on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes. Was everybody um, able to review the minutes from the last meeting? Yep. So is there somebody needs to vote to approve them? Yeah, you're looking for a motion to approve. Motion I'll, to approve. I move, I'll move that uh, we approve the minutes from the previous meeting on uh, March 16th. I second. Great. And then you'll ask for your vote. All those in favor? All those in favor to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'm trying to read the agenda and I have two computers going today for lots of different reasons. Um, happening to me. I apologize guys, just give me one second. This, and okay, so the next on um, the agenda is the YSS report. Hey, you're muted. Hi, sorry. Hi, Kate. How are you? So I just did um, an outdoor session at the Red Barn. So I like rushed back here and like I'm a little frazzled, but it was really nice to be outside and like see people again. So I'm excited about that. Um, awesome. So JRB has picked up. Um, since I wrote this report, I think that's probably due to the fact that all the kids are back in school. So we have three referrals for our JRB for the month of June and a review coming up in June. Um, one of the referrals was not a school-based referral. One was um, actually a referral from Montville PD for a student that lives in Ledger. Um, so JRB will be picking up. I see that probably continuing through the end of the school year with everybody being back at school. 
um, truancy, there weren't any referrals for this month. Um, and the two referrals that were not followed through last month got sent back to the school. Um, so I'm not sure what the school decisions were on those two cases. Um, counseling, our interns graduated at the end of April. So we originally were supposed to get two interns from URI starting. And we have one intern from St. Joseph's University who will be continuing. He started last September and he'll be here through next May. Um, but at the last minute, one of the interns kind of backed out and backed out of the program completely. So we were down to one intern um, coming in, which was a little anxiety provoking for me because I know that going into next year with kids all coming back to school, there will be a lot of need for mental health services in town. Um, so I was very excited to get a call from URI uh, two weeks ago stating that they wanted to place another one of their interns that had originally interviewed with us here uh, because their site wasn't working out. Um, and it was somebody that I enjoyed in the interview and I thought would be a good fit. So I was more than happy to take them on. So we were back up to two URI interns for this coming year and she started Monday. Um, so counseling caseloads dropped because we were down to three clinicians, myself and the two others. So we had to close out clinically appropriate case, cases that needed to close, um, but that might have wanted to continue on, even though they might not have necessarily needed to, uh, just because our services are free and some families like to just stay involved, just in case. So, but we closed a lot of cases. So our caseloads dropped a little bit. Um, but I have 18 cases. Jeff from St. You know, St. Joe's has 13 and Brian, I think he's up to nine as of this week. He's had a few intakes as well. Um, and then Vicki coming in will get all new intakes as they get referred through the end of the year. Um, and that is it for us. We're, oh, that's not it. I'm not, I'm not done. Um, so with uh, the changes that are going on with mask mandates and everything, we're gonna open up to in-person services again. I'm coming up with kind of policies around what that's gonna look like for families coming in because most of the kids, young kids we see won't be vaccinated. So they'll still have to wear masks. We're gonna continue to offer telehealth as an option for families. So they can either choose to come into the office, they can choose to do telehealth. And we're also gonna do um, outside appointments when we can at, over at the Red Barn for families that would rather be outside that feel more comfortable being outside given the fact that we don't have any ventilation down here. So that is what I'm working on right now. And hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll have more people kind of in face-to-face -face sessions. So that's exciting. Any questions? Yes, Mayor Allen. Kate, hey, uh, given that we went through that, um, the meeting today on the military and family life counselor, is that something, because Michaela is at the high school, I believe, right, Michaela? Not anymore, I left, but I was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just kidding. Um, because, yeah, that, that was, I, I mean, I wasn't aware of it. I didn't know that there was a military uh, counseling service available, but I don't know if you want to share anything about that. So it was uh, the military family life counselor, and there's one currently at JWL elementary school, and there's one at the middle school right now, um, and they are licensed mental health providers. However, the services they provide to families is not technically clinical services. So they provide family support services uh, for kids going through deployment, for kids going through reunification of a family member who's been deployed. Um, they'll kind of do out, they don't have to necessarily meet the kids in the school system. So they can go out to the house, they can meet them at, you know, a mini golf they could do other things in the community they provide uh trainings they provide like seminars to families um so it seems like a really great resource um that we have in town and one of the things that was brought up is the possibility of of having one at the high school that's something that the high school would have to reach out to um the military child family people i forget Miranda, I think is the, the person um, to get somebody placed at the high school, but that might be something that would be of great benefit to the high school for those kids. Um, I thought the only drawback that I saw was that the kids can't be involved in any additional services at the same time. 
So that was kind of mm -hmm. concerning to me because there could be a family that's dealing with some mental health needs, but they also have this military family need at the same time. Um, and it seems like they have to be out of counseling in order to be involved in that service. Um, but outside of that, it sounds like a pretty awesome, awesome service to have in town at each of the schools. Anything else? So is that, um, this is Joe, um, the counseling, let's say they needed mental health counseling and, and if they're part of, you're saying that if they're part of the advocate from the military, they are not allowed to have those services from you? So they would have to end services with the military family Mm -hmm. uh, start oh, because so I'm just looking at it from, they might be, uh, you know, like scared to bring it up with the military side. It kind of puts them in a spot to forego mental health issues just to keep their kids, you know, they're in, a, in the military side of things. That kind of is a tough spot. Yeah, I think one of the things they that the, the two clinicians that we're talking today seem to stress was that they provide referrals to the family. So I think if something came up and they noticed that there was a concern, they uh -huh. provide those referrals to the family and kind of encourage them mm -hmm. to take. Oh, it's sort of like it keeps it under their umbrella then, right? It's sort of like probably that's maybe that's the point. I think they'll refer out, but then they'll uh -huh. stop services with them. Like the, the military part will stop and then they'll be able to join back in after they've come. Oh, okay. The health piece. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, that's how I specific um, situation that they work with. And if they have concerns and they have like certain scales that they use, if they have concerns for depression, anxiety, anything more than adjusting from a family member being deployed or coming home, it then goes to a local agency or, or um, clinician. Uh, or... Did, did they give a rationale for uh, why they cannot he said it's not my policy yeah no. yeah it's a funding thing yeah it sounded like it was a dod policy and they are just like it's that's how it is and, and and they were very clear about that like there, there is no exception to that rule mm -hmm. because they have feet and uh fleet and family on base for family members um that need mental health services. So their funding gets really tricky. I don't know if there's anybody wow. that knows like more about that, but um, it's kind of where they allocate their money. Oh, okay. All right, any other for me? Good. Okay, so the, the next, um, Agenda item is a social services report. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Kristen and uh, I am the new, uh, the mayor's new executive assistant and the social services coordinator. So I'm happy to, to meet you all. Um, I uh, wanted to give you some statistics from March and April. In March, we had 84 client visits for the food pantry, a total of 147 uh, people served. In April, 72 client visits, 113 people served. Um, new, uh, new clients, new signups in the month of April, we've had three and we've had a total of eight, uh, in 2021. Um, uh, we are seeing visits, um, have, have decreased a bit over the past few months. I, I do think we may see a change to that. Um, Connecticut Food Bank is, is ending at the end of this month. All, a lot of the uh, extra emergency distribution sites, the, the farm to families boxes, those programs are going to be ending. So I think you know we're we're prepared to um, possibly uh, see see some clients that haven't haven't come in a bit and um, sign up some new clients. Um, a food pantry update: uh, the food pantry is relocating, so we are moving from the Ledger Congregational Church and moving to the Red Barn, uh, located on the town green. Construction for that is underway, and we've made plans for the move. We are going to be closed the week of Memorial Day, so May 30th through June 7th. We are closed. Um, we will make arrangements with clients um, if, they, if they need a little bit extra to get through um, since they can pick up every 14 days. And then we will reopen at the new location on June 8th for clients. Um, this month we've had 
well, I've had four client referrals and I've referred um, residents to Unite CT and TVCCA. Uh, any questions? Hmm? There's also yes, one thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa. Um, just one thing to add to uh, the, so uh, I'm sorry, Kristen and I had a meeting um, about the food pantry and uh, we were trying to better understand, it was, a, it was an eye opener for us both, but we were trying to understand better the number of volunteers that we have both distributing food as well as stocking the shelves and things like that, because there are two different groups of people that do those things traditionally. And uh, Seems like they have a good number of volunteers, but there's a fair number of people that are kind of snowbirds too. So people will volunteer at the food pantry, they'll work on it, uh, but then come November, they're scarce. So um, it is a volunteer opportunity for people if they're interested in working at the food mm -hmm. pantry, picking up a shift. The shifts are actually uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturdays from nine to 11 a.m. So it's not a heavy lift by any means. Uh, but you do have to be, you do have to receive a brief training. And so I'm telling you this now because you probably won't be meeting again until after this next training, which is July 1st. Um, it's at 10 a.m. and it's at the Holdridge Pavilion on the Upper Town Green. Um, it's less than two hours. Basically, you just sit there at a picnic table, drink your coffee or whatever, listen to uh, what they're going to tell you and then you sign a form acknowledging that you have been through the training at which point you can then um, sign up to uh, take shifts at the food pantry on sign up genius so it's just an online tool you pick a shift you can pick one with a friend or coworker or whomever and um, and uh, serve at the pantry so i just wanted to you know put that out as a public service announcement Again, uh, what I'm time is that meeting at fred uh, oh, I'm sorry, Joe, say that once more. On July 1st, what time is it at? Oh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m., okay. Yeah. It's, it's not more than two hours. It's, it's less than uh, that. All right, thanks. I'll, I'll be there. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. And, um, I will ask if, if anyone is interested in attending that. We are taking uh, registration just so we know we can you know prepare enough materials. So. Anyone interested in attending that training on July 1st can reach out to me at 860-464-3222 and I will get you signed up for that training. All right, I'll be calling you. Um, Kristen, do you need to be available Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday or if someone's just available on Saturdays, they could still go to the training? It's a, it's a sign up genius. So you may, you know, some people volunteer every week. Some people may volunteer once a month. Um, okay. And, you know, we do also, they do also take volunteers for the inventory portion of it. So, you know, there are, there are some shifts on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, prepping all of the packages. Um, I should mention this as well. Um, the food pantry has moved to a new pre-order process. So we're giving clients, giving people more, ch giving people more choice um, as to what they need, you know, and, and making it more of, you know, we used to shop and things change with COVID, but they, folks can fill out a form and they can email that in, or we will have a drop box at the new pantry. So we do, they do have volunteers that will fill those orders so that they're ready to go uh, when the clients come to pick up. Any other social service questions? No. Thanks, Kristen. All right, so next on our agenda is uh, old business. Members discussion on current knowledge regarding youth and social service issues within the town. I Or do we have any issues within the town? I think it's something that um, the uh, the community relations uh, subcommittee of the town council kind of wanted us to have as a placeholder so that if there was something that came forward that came through their subcommittee, it was something that they could advance um, to this committee for discussion. Uh, okay. I, I don't know of any um, at the present time. I have a question, and I, I'm not sure if it's totally related to social services, but 
I just do the day online, but I remember a while back, I saw something about, there was a, um, I don't know if it was a Black Lives Matter protest, but there was something at the um, uh, town hall, some kind of, mm -hmm. did oh, I read recent, that correctly in the news? Was that, was that more recently, Catherine? I, I think it was within maybe the past month or two. Okay, yes. And I, I wondered if there was anything happening in, in that regard. So apparently at a town council meeting, a town councilor, um, or maybe it was a subcommittee. I think it was. I think it was actually the the community relations subcommittee meeting, at, at which point a town councilor uh, made a comment that uh, maybe was misinterpreted, maybe wasn't, um, maybe wasn't said perfectly, but um, it was uh, it was grabbed onto by by some people and um, they vocalized about it. So there were. I don't know, a dozen people that protested out in front of town hall, um, probably that weekend, I would guess. So I think it happened on a Wednesday and they've been maybe Friday or Saturday, there was a protest in front of town hall. And what was the protest exactly? Like, what was the, the issue that had them just, how, what was taken from what the counselor said? Yeah, I, I, I did not attend that community relations committee meeting, but I believe what yeah. it what it dealt with were uh, things to do with maybe critical race theory and um, a kind of a counterpoint to that. So I, I believe right. that Councillor Ingalls, uh, something was asked about that and Councillor Ingalls had said uh, that she, she kind of wanted to, um, she kind of wanted to bet out whatever the speaker was before the speaker went to speak before the town council. So oh. in, in the subcommittee setting, you wanna understand um, what it is that somebody is yep. looking to convey and see if it makes sense for that to be conveyed to the town council as a whole. So right. I, I think that's, that's how that went down. All right. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion on current uh, youth and social service issues within the town? Well, well, one of the things I hear around town all the time is uh, food distribution and dealing with, uh, like with Nash and Tucket and understanding how their system works, their social services and relation to ours. And I think that a lot of times the uh, understanding the, and the clarity, I think amongst the, the tribal membership and understand the town's side of things. And, you know, uh, you know, sometimes it gets taken and uh, blown out of proportion with, uh, you know, someone referred to services or if somebody is just not eligible. And a lot of times those things gain legs and run on, you know, with the media and stuff. And I think uh, sometimes it's too much and sometimes understand. And I, I work for the social services and youth services up there for over 20 years and did distribution for them on their side, understanding their side. And I'd love to talk with their social services sometime in a sit down where we understand things, uh, both sides of things. So they, they're they doing their thing. And uh, Chairman Butler is a good friend to um, talk to about, you know, how he does things. And that was one of my concerns is like, you know, I've seen where, you know, you know, some people are what the town's people call, say double dipping where, yeah, that happens, but there's also, um, if any of you have friends and, you know, membership, some of them are in a bad way and, and do need that. And it's tough for them to come to some, the food pantry sometimes. And, you know, it's like, you know, what it comes down is it's human beings who needs needs and there's, you know, we don't need people, you know, double dip in the system just for their own or to give away or to just frankly hoarding it. But um, we also have to, uh, I always keep in mind, it's like, yeah, for some of them have uh, been disabled and their social services, a lot of red tape and when they have to get designated as disabled, you know, and meanwhile, they got to eat and so their kids, you know. So do we not, do our tribal members do not have access to our food pantry? So no, they, that, go, go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, okay, so what no, I was just mean, was, um, 
what we we had met with uh, Chairman Butler and the um, tribal councilors uh, July of last year, and the discussion revolved around it was exactly what Joe just referred to, which was what social service um, components exist at the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation and what uh, services exist in the town of Ledger. And then we talked about um, what services would be available in the town of Ledger for Mashantucket members residing in the town of Ledger as opposed to on the reservation. And so what, what we ultimately came down to was if they are, if they reside in the town of Ledger and on taxable property in the town of Ledger, we provide that service to them as, as a resident. But if they reside on the reservation, um, they would go to tribal nation for services first. So that's uh, that was what we discussed uh, July of last year. Now, what I will also tell you is that um, we don't have a food issue and we have not had a food issue with Mashantucket Pequot tribal members seeking food from the Ledger Food Pantry. That's not a problem. We have plenty of food. Um, we can Good. certainly awesome. distribute food to uh, tribal nation members. Uh, but like I said, um, that's not that's that's not what's they they have not come forward for that. I should say. But that's great to hear. And um, you know, uh, sometimes uh, you know some people you that up there have had a bitter p uh, pill you know, from some other kind of service throughout town, and they sometimes use the social services or something like that as a way to vent. And a lot of times they're unfounded and. Um, you know, it's good that the relationship's pretty darn good, if you ask me, between, you know, it, what it, like coming down to just uh, people, you know, needing something to eat. You know, and that's great to hear, Fred. That's awesome. Yeah, and, 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 and furthering that, too, and this is the case with anybody. And it doesn't matter if they're ledgered residents or they came from Washington State or wherever. If somebody were to come in and, and say that they are hungry, they don't have to apply. They don't have to be vetted as as uh, clients. They can get a bag yeah. of food immediately. So that's also available. That is awesome. That is good to hear. And um, even if my availability to um, volunteer at the pantry based on hours, it will be difficult. But I am interested in sitting in on that um training because i think it's important that as members of the social services board that these things come up in town and there is questions i want to be able to actually report what we do do so i'm very happy to hear that if anyone whether you know they show up hungry we're going to provide them with food and that um I, I did hear, I'm glad you brought it up, Joe, because I do remember hearing rumbling somewhere about tribal members yeah. denied food um, by our food pantry. And obviously we would want to um, clearly state that that's not accurate and that we want to yeah. provide yeah. for all people in our town yeah. and anyone who's hungry. <laughs> yes, yeah. well, that's that so area that was a, a, a thousand good deeds and, and one, you know, one that uh, just, uh, uh, miscommunication can turn into, oh, was it, don't forget the, you know, other stuff. Sometimes it's just a miscommunication that just has to be just talked about. And then Fred, you do a great job with it, by the way, and uh, uh, being able to, um, you know, calm, you know, calm and uh, minds, you know, solve a lot of problems. Good. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Um, the other, so number two under old business was focus on community outreach. Yeah, so I've, I have a, a point I'd like to touch on. We talked about last time how we, you know, as a board, we offer plenty of services, but not as many people in the community know about all of the services we offer. And especially I'm, I'm wondering about younger students and, and you know, teenage and, and high school students. I'm not entirely sure what the school does to distribute that information 
whether there's announcements or emails or even if teachers talk about it. Um, but I think regardless, it might be a good idea to get the word out and really try to uh, allow whether it's the elderly uh, or the youth to understand what we have to offer and what they can access. Because there's great counseling services and um, available assistance uh, that I'm not sure if, if m as much people know about uh, as, mm -hmm. as they could. Ryan, do you have any ideas about the best way to get that information to teens? Because right now it's based on like guidance counselors, principals, teachers know that we exist. So the referrals come basically from those places, but they don't have to. Like a family can just call me and get involved in services. And I'm not really sure how to get that information into the teens' hands that need to hear it. Well, um, one thing that's interesting is about, well, I guess almost every every teen and, and peer that I know gets the majority of their news from social media. And I'm just talking about you know, Snapchat and Instagram and, and Facebook, those, those platforms. No newspapers, no websites, no town, nothing like that. It's, it's solely from those um, platforms and those services. Um, so I'm not sure if we have an online presence or uh, any media page or availability, but I think if if we can get the information out in that way and and try to uh, reach students digitally and, and online, uh, that would be huge um, because I think that's the main way um, a lot of uh, my peers understand and, and um, gather information. So I think that would be and something to look into. I think it's awesome because it's also free for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I don't know, Kate, I, I don't, I feel like I'm like stepping on toes, just brainstorming. Um, if that could be like an intern's job. So, <laughs> um, as far as to say media. that it could, because I am the only one that's here. So like, I totally hear what Ryan is saying. And I agree, like mm -hmm. that's absolutely where that information needs to come from. But I have nobody to do that because I am not social savvy on those things. And that would be like a full-time <laughs> job for me. And my interns only get clinical hours. Like they have to reach clinical hours. They're not MSW interns where just have to have like a bulk of hours. So, so adding that to that isn't really something I can do because it wouldn't be helping them reach their ultimate goal. Um, they could probably like help direct me in how to do it. But again, that's one more thing that one person in this office has no, I, to take hold is, of. is there a way that we could make like a social media like Ryan what about you? like as far as this <laughs> committee like to get it because I totally love the social media and that's honestly how I like promote my own stuff um because it's just what people are on but I okay I absolutely understand that the interns only get the clinical hours. So I, I totally get that. I'm, I'm actually thinking like, is there any way Ryan, like does the high school have any like social media present? Like, I wonder if I could like piggyback on a school social media thing so that like, they could find out for me. Tons. Kate, there's, yeah. Fagan has her, um, they are more Twitter, which is going, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but Twitter's kind of going out of style these days. I don't know if I'm wrong in that, but um, they have like Instagrams and um, I know like uh, Unicor has an Instagram for sports. So there's definitely contacts that I could get you at the high school level, Kate. Um, I know the counseling department has one. Um, so if you want that, I could be helpful in that regard. I feel like I would need to piggyback on somebody else's because me putting it out there, like no one's going to follow me. Like <laughs> no one's going to follow you, sirs. But if I like put it out there on like somebody else's, it, it might get that information out to more people quicker. Well, there's a ledger coalition too. I mean, that would be mm -hmm. like another place to piggyback on. Yeah, that's, that's a good point is using the ledger prevention coalition and, yeah. um, they do have stuff that's already set up and we could probably talk to Carenza and Carl 
Uh, Carl's in the schools all the time and um, mm -hmm. probably a good inroad. And Ryan, that's th this is exactly why you were on here. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. an excellent idea. So thank you. Yeah, no, and I think um, that that is a, a good point about Twitter, especially with uh, my generation, that is st sort of becoming less prominent. And yeah. for our purposes, I think Instagram would be the the easiest and most uh, direct and easiest to organized uh, option to get this information out. And yeah, it probably would be difficult to create an own page or our own page based off um, availability and time, but also having that presence and being able to reach people. So maybe piggybacking off another account or another platform would be a pretty good idea. And uh, there, there is a Facebook page for the Ledger Food Pantry. So Ledger Food Pantry, if you're, if you don't follow it, you know, I suggest you do. And and um, the the supervisors that are volunteers manage that page, and and I have access as well. So uh, everything from you know it's time to renew to you know no delay, we're closing. Um, you know, it's open to volunteers. It's open to anybody. And we will also post other. Um, social service programs on that page that may be interested to people that follow that food pantry page. So, uh, you know, post about the Unite CT rental assistance program. We'll post um, some of the mobile food pantries happening around town. So Ledger Food Pantry does have, does have that presence uh, on Facebook currently. I think the hard part to Ryan's point is Facebook is kind of like Ryan's generation reading, picking up and reading a newspaper. It's just, it's yeah. not doing it. So, yeah, good point. Um, I think for the senior citizens, the Ledger Events uh, magazine probably is the place to go. And I think last time we did talk about maybe every time putting an article in there about the different types of social services available. I know. People in the older generation are not as savvy as the younger, so uh, that mm. probably is a, a good route to go. And maybe you know, maybe even having stuff posted at the when the um, senior center reopens, maybe having stuff posted there as well. Yeah, there is a, there is an article about uh, a short article about the food pantry going in the summer edition that will be coming out the week of May thirty first. That's coming out. Um, and just highlighting the move in the new location and the number to call if, if you're a resident and you need food assistance. Um, so that, that is coming out in that issue, but definitely utilizing that magazine. You know, when I hear this stuff, like uh, it's so smart with the digital and getting it out there on like the, you know, the like the di if Twitter's dying, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that savvy with it myself, but it also makes me think of that Tom Hanks movie that just went by called News of the World, and where I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it's no one gets the real news of the world, and he goes town to town and is paid to read the newspapers from all over. And sometimes these assemblies that we have with a lot of youth or a lot of uh, townspeople, it's almost like the old public service announcement before a show would take place in the old days on TV. You'd, you'd, like, you'd be able to see like the national what was it uh, the silo company american harvester would do a thing on uh dangers of rats but uh, not to be that way but i mean some of these great programs that are just sort of there that these that everyone doesn't know about if there was a way to somehow get especially with ryan with the school and stuff before let's say a band concert or anything like that we have a lot of people and just a quick message before we get started kind of thing you know yeah or any event where we have a lot of townspeople or towns youth. Yeah, I I and, I like, um, and I like Kate's idea of reaching out to the high school and if they do have like an Instagram yeah. account, piggybacking on that, because the kids are probably not gonna follow like Ledger Coalition or follow Ledger Food Pantry, but they're gonna follow their high school because they're gonna right. events and the things the kids do. And one thing I, I do admire about Ryan's generation is that they're much more willing to talk about mental health and seek services mm -hmm. than my generation yep. was. So if the kids mm -hmm. share it um, amongst each other, they are more willing to you know, reach out to their peers. Um, so I think that's a great idea because yep. 
we can't have a bunch of older people determining how to um, get to teens and young adults. So thank you, Ryan, for that input. Sure, and, and to add one more point, I think even though my generation is more open about this topic and feels more comfortable discussing it, there is of course still uh, a huge stigma and there's certainly a lot of embarrassment to reach out mm -hmm. and go maybe go into the guidance, um, you know, counselors off and, and have those conversations. So I think social media also provides students in indirect way so that you know mm -hmm. even though there shouldn't be a stigma because that it's perfectly normal to seek uh, this assistance and get this help but it gives them an indirect way to reach out and, and make make uh, students feel more comfortable and and make them more willing to reach out if they can do it without speaking face to face with a person or you know having to have you know such interactions um, so i think that that avenue to an aspect on it um, might be another positive. Effect. Yeah. Great. And they also can educate their parents on other services in town as well, um, if their mm -hmm. parents have access to that information. All right, any other um, discussion on the community outreach? So, and uh, number three is any other old business to bring before the board? Um, can I just ask, I know, uh, I think Michaela put it in chat. Um, it, Anne Holland joined us, is um, a board member? Just so we can acknowledge that in the minutes. Uh, she's <laughs> just a visitor. She's not a board member. Oh, okay. I apologize, I didn't recognize the name. Charlene well, did join a bit late so that we can reflect that in the minutes. I shouldn't say visitor, I should say resident. She's a resident. Okay. So uh, next on our agenda is new business. Uh, introduction to our new social service coordinator, Kristen Chapman. Hi, hello again. Um, you know, I think I already said hello, but again, I am uh, uh, new. I've been in the role for about five weeks now, so I, I uh, am. Um, I've been spending certainly um, some time over at the pantry. I've been going for the different shifts, and and again, um, Lisa, as you mentioned, you know, I will be going through the training too in July. Uh, just learning, you know, the inventory process, the delivery process. I've been participating in some of the um, Connecticut food bank meetings that have been happening. Um, other than that, I've been really kind of just spending time um, connecting with and, and introducing myself over the phone or virtually to the various agencies, you know, that do that we, we do work with to get support for our residents if they need it. Um, I've uh, talked to the folks at, at TVCCA, United Way, Always Home. So spending time um, just reaching out and getting to know uh, getting to know the people in, in various agencies that will be there to assist uh, with our residents' needs. So uh, happy to be here and um, happy to answer any questions from our residents. Thanks, Kristen. Welcome. We're happy to have you. <laughs> Guide. Uh, sure. I'm very happy to be guided along. Um, so oh, number two under new business is any other new business to come before the board? So hi. <laughs> um, after after the last meeting, which uh, we kind of ended by talking about the lack of programs for older kids like teenagers, where parks and rec, unless they're they're volunteering as supervisors, doesn't really kind of cater to them, and then there's not really too many facilities or whatever for the older teenagers. And I had um, followed up with Kate and came up with a teen entrepreneur program down at um, Sweet Hill Farm in Gales, in Gales Ferry, which is somewhat of a consortium of, of vendors. And the, the, to kind of, I'll let you ask questions if you have it, but the overall gist of it would be for the summer, we run a six to eight week program where teenagers can sign up, they can, they can team up with a friend and come up with a um, craft or a business. Uh, we would help them make a business page. Uh, we would have a series of speakers. So um, like they would have to attend like discussions and it would be a small amount of people. 
Like for example, um, like our recommended photographer is a Ledger High School, a young woman, a Ledger High School alumni, Molly Barnett. She would, she agreed to come down and do a talk and her talk topic would be turning your passion into profit. So it would be the business end of things, um, but it would also be somewhat of a nurturing, like discovery and self-esteem type of thing. So we have, I have um, a youth pastor from a church that would do a discussion on just kind of like, who am I and gifts and talents. Um, so we have like a lot of um, just motivational speakers. I have another person that does um, Dave Ramsey's financial management, and he's actually getting trained right now to be a teacher. They, they, they actually have a teen Dave Ramsey financial management, um, like a living debt free. So he would come and lead a discussion for the teenagers. Um, so I did hear back from the high school. I had reached out to Ms. Fagan, um, extremely interested and supportive. Uh, she gave me the contact for, I guess, the business teacher, I forget her name, and the ag teacher. So she said all those would be great contacts. Um, still kind of, I didn't quite get an answer. I'll follow up with her again. Things at the high school are just with, with everything going back in person are kind of chaotic. But um, one question was, can they, could they get you know high school credit in any of these things? So those are all kind of still on the table. Um, it'll probably be rolled out in the next couple of weeks. So before school ends, it's just really a matter of um, just getting the, the paperwork printed, the sign up paperwork printed and what type of format to send that out, probably a newsletter or something. I'll have to find out what type of format is easiest for her to help get the word out. So that's, awesome. Yeah. I love everything about that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Great, great program to start. Sounds great, Charlene. It's like uh, life skills type of stuff that is desperately needed. Yeah. 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 So we'll see what kind of sign up and what kind of response that it gets. <laughs> I'm excited and scared at the same time. A lot of teenagers is a scary, scary thing. But we already have we already have several, and that's why I think it's a natural. Like, we have another. Um, a vendor, you know, and they're obviously they're not teenagers, they're graduates, but we have another one who him and his friends started a coffee roasting company, you know, and maybe he would come into a discussion. So I think the the key component of it is to get them doing something for the summer. Mm -hmm. And then also um, that discovery piece, like uh, what Mayor Fred just talked about, the, the self-discovery, so. Charlene, are you looking for referrals to come straight through the school or could a community provider share uh, Sweet Hills information with a family um, if they live in town and and connect. Yeah, with I don't. I I don't. Um, I don't think I have a preference. I'm a little bit nervous about the um, the you know it takes a lot to manage that you know so I'm a little bit nervous about having too many sure. um, responses and of course that's optimistic because I don't I don't know what type of level of response we're gonna have. Um, so my what I'm thinking about, but this is not carved in stone. Like, I think, you know, maybe several kids would be ideal, but then it's one of those things where you think small and it, it could really go anywhere. And I, and I, and when it comes to kids, I don't think that I would, you know, if it was going somewhere and the need was there, I don't think that I, you know, I think I would take it on. That's what I think. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Did I answer your question, Michaela? <laughs> no. Um, what I'm going to do is just reach out to you and you can okay. That's yeah, my plan. So okay, great. You, so you're interested in referring kids? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have my email, right? Yeah, I, I'll, we, we can reach out. I love it. Okay. Thanks, Charlene. Any yep. other uh, new business to come before the board? Just uh, uh, to get on everyone's mind, um, uh, we're going to be gearing up for the backpack program. So um, again, this program is, you know, completely uh, donation based. So um, doing some legwork, just uh, looking at what we have left, um, which, it, which is not much. So we're going to need, we're going to need, I know, Ledger residents come together, but donations for the backpack program. So I'll be putting that together and hoping to get that information out um, uh, within the next few weeks, early June on um, how to donate backpack supplies, donate funds so we can buy the backpacks and supplies. Um, so just wanted to make everyone aware of that. And, and I love the idea with Ryan of maybe some other avenues, thinking of some other avenues that we can use just to let people know uh, that this is happening and, and how they can help. Nice. 
And just further on that, what we will do is we will, um, as we have in the past, we kind of go on to Amazon. We look at some backpacks for either younger kids, middle schoolers, and high schoolers, and kind of identify a couple that that work that are you know neutral and um, sized appropriately based on the age group. And then we will let everybody know. And then what people have done in the past is uh, they would just order one as part of their own prime order or whatever, and they will have it delivered right to town hall. And then um, we have them here to start stuffing them and putting notebooks and pens, pencils, crayons, whatever it is based on that age group in there and ready for distribution uh, early August. That's great. And, and just to clarify, it seems that uh, the consensus is we should look into the social media avenue as a way to uh, get the word out. So would you like me to brainstorm more on that topic and, and come to the next meeting with ideas on how to best do that exactly? Ryan, you would be a lifesaver because I do not have <laughs> Snapchat. So if you could teach me how to do any of that, like you would be a lifesaver. I would love that. All right, I will come prepared next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. All our heads started nodding You're like, yes. <laughs> I wanna see Kate on Snapchat or whatever that is. <laughs> Fantastic, any other new business? I'll, I'll add one quick thing, Lisa, if I could. Um, we are we are starting live meetings again, uh, starting really next week. Um, based on the governor's changes on, on masking, masking is going to not be required in town hall or in town buildings, except for schools. Schools are doing their own thing, um, assuming you have been vaccinated. So for those that have been vaccinated, they do not have to wear masks. And I say this because I believe your next meeting will be live. And in some cases, after a year, we will actually be able to meet people face to face. So I'm very much yeah. looking for that. And I will keep everybody up to date on that so uh, we can do that. Nice. That's very good news. So if that's all, um, can we get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Um, I'll move that we adjourn the meeting. Maria, not second. Maria. Yep. second. I'll that. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so. Aye, aye. See hands, I hear voices. There you go, Lisa. Great job. Yes. Thank Meeting you. adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good Bye. evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. And hope to meet everybody next time. So. Yeah, yeah, that'll be excellent. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>